With Maya complete, I moved on to Ali's story. I loved the thought of travelling from the heat of Rio de Janeiro to the snowy fjords of Norway. And finding my cultural landmark wasn't difficult, because I had been brought up on Grieg's beautiful evocative music. So it was with a genuine excitement that I flew to Norway to discover the story behind Grieg's iconic Peer Gynt suite. The first stop on my research trip was to Bergen and Trollhagen, Grieg's home and now a museum. I met with Erling Dahl, a recent recipient of the Grieg Prize, who painted a vivid picture of the composer's life. In Oslo, I discovered Henrik Ibsen had asked Grieg to write the incidental music to his original poem for a stage production of Peer Gynt. And it was here that I found my plot, when the director of the Ibsen Museum told me of the ghost voice who had sung Solveig's song from the wings each night, as the actress playing her on stage couldn't sing a note. Who was she? In the present, Ali is in the Aegean with her newfound love and is shattered by the news of her father's sudden death, especially as she has just seen his boat, the Titan, anchored in a cove on a nearby island only the day before. Having returned to Atlantis, the family home on the shores of Lake Geneva, she has received Pa Salt's posthumous clues to her true heritage. In your weakest moments, you will find your greatest strength, reads her inscription on the armillary sphere. And when tragedy strikes again, Ali is forced to recognise the truth of Parsalt's words. Now she must not only confront her future, but her past. This leads her back to Norway, where her search for her real-life family reignites her passion for music and ultimately leads her to rediscover the beauty of life itself. The last chapter moves on to Star, the third and most mysterious of the six sisters. Her story will take us to the gracious country estates and gardens of England, and will celebrate the literary legacy of its writers and its often turbulent royal family.